Hello everybody and welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time. Tonight's something a little bit different. Uh, since I've been back I've been pretty busy uh, and what I wanted to get done was to finish that 1933 Philco 60L. That was actually my second radio chassis that I had ever restored. It was about three and a half years ago and uh, it had been down here in the workshop and other projects came on board and it just kind of fell by the wayside. I had it finished and running but I needed to get the cabinet that's upstairs completed for it and it just fell by the wayside and never happened. So anyway uh, a couple of years ago I was going to get started on it and I plugged it in and went to, use it to test it and it wasn't working and it wasn't doing anything. I did some troubleshooting and I found one of the tubes was bad. I believe it was the 78 tube, but I, I couldn't be 100% sure. It's been a while. So, uh, a few months ago, I got a new tube for it, put it in it, started working again, and it, the volume control wasn't working properly, so I ordered a new volume control for it, and we got that in, and uh, ultimately I found out that I did have a wire on the uh, pot in the incorrect location, and that's actually what took the tube out. So anyway, I got that corrected and got it working. So once I got back from North Carolina uh, working on my house, I decided I needed to get that done and get it out of here before I started back on the farm radio. So that's what I did and that's what this video is. It's just a quick video of me cleaning up the cabinet, getting the chassis installed, and showing you the finished product. Now, I will tell you on the last frame where I have it playing, you'll hear a pretty noticeable hum. That hum was not down here in the basement. You'll also see that as well. And uh, I'm thinking it's because of the way I ran my antenna wire, I think, and my ground. I think I've got them. I drilled some holes in the floor and ran them down the basement. And I think I've got some uh, uh, AC hum going in there from the wiring. So I may have to redo that. <clears throat> but... It sounds actually pretty good, other than there's some hum in there, and that wasn't down here when I played it, so I think that's what's going on. I'll get that corrected. But without further ado, let's check this out and uh, see what you guys think of the 1933 60L. I actually was not doing videos at the time I restored that, so there's no video of it uh, other than this one. So anyway, let's take a look. So this is the 1933 Philco 60L cabinet that I've had up in my foyer for the last three and a half years while I restored the electrical portion of it. It's actually not in too bad shape other than the grill cloth is super thin and ripped out so I'm going to have to put something else in there. It's got problems here and there as far as dings and dents and spots that need to be fixed but it's also approaching 100 years old here so I'm not going to be too concerned with it. It's dusty, it's dirty, it's got some paint specks on it, but we're going to kind of leave it as is and I'm just going to wipe it down with some Howard's Restore and I think that it will do it justice. So we'll get, the, we'll get that on there and see how it looks, but I think it'll be sufficient. The legs are kind of iffy, but we'll see how it turns out. It's also pretty dirty inside. Let me show you. It's got a nice layer of dust and dirt in there, so I'm going to blow it out with my air compressor and wipe it out with some Method Bacterial Cleaner and we'll start the uh, wipe down with the Howard Restorer. Alright, so that looks a little bit better. I got all the dust all cleaned out of it. Wiped it down pretty nice. Now I'm getting ready to try and get some of this uh, paint off of here. I got a fairly sharp but sort of dull scraper. And I think that I can knock the biggest pieces off. Like that. And then we'll go over it with the Howard's Restorer. And some Scotch Brite. That's we get that done, and we'll come back. Okay. 
Okay, so I've been scrubbing the Howard Restorer into this top using this Scotch Bright pad, and uh, I think it's doing okay as far as bringing that paint out and fixing the wood. I'm getting ready to. I gotta finish it on this edge over here, and uh, we'll wipe it down and see what it looks like. Now, technically, you're not supposed to pour this directly on. But, because the top was as bad as it was, I'm going to put it up directly on there anyway. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. You just got to make sure we got enough on here and lubrication to get into all these pores. Get all that paint out. There was a lot of paint that was fine, almost like fine mist type paint besides the big drips. And, uh, but I think that I think it did okay. I might have to go over it a second time, but I think for the most part, I got most enough all of that paint off of there. Let's wipe that off and see what it actually looks like. Now that I've... Man, there's something missed right there. Okay. That looks pretty good. I see a couple of spots I still gotta hit a little bit further. I still see a little bit of paint on it. And right here was actually a, a wet mark from where somebody, like a watermark, somebody had gotten on there. But that didn't look too bad. I had that a little bit, a little bit more. missing wood but I'm not gonna fix that it's just patina this is the uh, like I said this was the second second radio that I restored from an electronic standpoint and I never did ever get to the cabinet I had it down in the basement I restored it I got it all adjusted as far as alignment and other stuff came up, got other projects, and I didn't do anything with the cabinet. And then, about a year and a half later, I went to turn it on, and I had an issue with the radio. It wouldn't come on at all. So I had to start doing some troubleshooting, and it had come back to, uh, I want to say it was a 78 tube, it had gone bad, so I didn't have one, and I just put it aside and didn't do anything else with it, and now my other project showed up, and this just kind of fell by the wayside, and this cabinet's been sitting up in my foyer ever since. It actually looks pretty good. Let me get uh, get you closer so I can show you. All right, so here we are, a little closer. But uh, it looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. That's that bad corner. I'm gonna touch that up a little bit. Pour probably a little bit more with a little paint stick, stain stick. But for 1933, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I'm gonna finish up the rest of this thing. I'm not gonna show it to you, but I'll bring you back when it's done. Alright, I got it done. 
I'm actually pretty happy with it. It's it's pretty presentable. I mean, it's not perfect, that's for sure. I mean, but this is just uh, a touch up with some hard restore and a little paint stick here and there. But um, all in all, I think it it looks pretty darn good. I mean, it's getting ready to storm out here. I got to get it in the house. But I yeah, apologize for the lighting, but since it's going to storm, it has gotten uh, pretty dark out here on the front porch, which is where I'm doing this at. But as you can see, it. hopefully you can see. I mean, like I said, it's not perfect. I mean, you see here, it finishes a little thin right through here. But depending upon how the light hits it, it's not bad. All the paint's gone. I think, I think it looks good. I may go back with a coat of tongue oil on it um, but in the inside of course I don't see I don't know if you can see that the lighting is probably so horrible you probably can't see in there but it looks it looks okay I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so go ahead and do something with the grill cloth I might have something close to that let me see what I can do with that Okay guys, so I got that grill cloth out down here, um, and you can see it's it's really bad. And you can really tell, I'm not sure how well it shows in the camera, but you can really tell the difference what the color originally was, here this bronzy color, compared to this really dull, dirty finish here. So, let's go ahead and take a look. I, I had to order a piece of grill cloth because I didn't realize that I, I thought I had what I needed for this and when I actually came down to it uh, it wasn't even close. So I went online I found this company called RadioCloth.com out of New York and I found something that Radio Grill Cloth, here it is actually here it is, radiogrillcloth.com. This piece of cloth was only $10, free shipping. I ordered it on Sunday, I got it on Friday. I'm very impressed. Let me show you this cloth because I think it being, you know, not original is about as close as I was going to find. So I'm very happy with the, the cloth. That's probably the closest I'm going to find for something like this. So. They shipped it flat in an envelope, big envelope, flat. So this is it. It's obviously not as bronzy, but it does have that pattern, even though it's a smaller pattern. I forget what that pattern was called, but um, We get up close here you can see it's got a very similar pattern the camera makes it look much more gold than what it actually is but I think it'll work fine that's the closest I could find so I'm pretty happy with it a very nice piece of cloth for ten dollars and uh, I think that'll look good in there so we'll go ahead and get that Installed, we'll get this old one off. Get the speaker mounting screws off of here. Obviously, it's not going to take much to get this off. Definitely rotten after almost 90 years. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and I'll come back. Okay, so I was originally going to use this spray adhesive, but it's kind of a one shot thing when you do that. And I'm concerned that I can't get this thing stretched out properly if I do that 
I mean, maybe I could spray it and fold it and work it and try and stretch it as I go. But I'm not sure that's going to work too good. I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is use some hot glue, a combination of hot glue and super glue to like maybe put some on the corner here which you guys can't see right here on but it, it just fits it okay and there's barely any room I can fold these over on the corner to get those attached and then pull each corner and then pull the sides and get it stretched like that once it's in the cabinet the cabinet's gonna hold it in there anyway so I'm thinking I'm just gonna glue the edges pull it tight and uh, see what we get okay so I got the cloth glued down on here in quite a few spots I got it stretched out nice I'm happy with it now I'm just going to go around the edges right on around the fringes to keep it from fringing out with the Eileen tacky glue and then that way it won't fringe out in the future plus it'll also help hold it so I'll get that done and bring it back Okay, here it is after I got the Eileen's Tacky Glue all on the red, all around the edges and um, it's dry and it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a, just a teeny wrinkle right there but I'm not too concerned about it because I think that that will probably be hidden by some of the woodwork in the radio anyway. And if it's slightly off, oh well, so be it. So I'm getting ready, I've gone through and I've marked approximately where the head of these bolts are going to go and I'm going to see if I can burn these in place. By burning this, it will keep the material from running. So we'll see if we can get this. Hopefully I'm pretty close. That looks pretty good there. We'll get these here. There we go. So that should work. Now I can put the screws on back in here like that and then the bolts go on the back side okay so I got the glue of the screws in there I went ahead and I just put a, a nut on the back side of each one of them I screwed it in a little top and I made sure that the speaker's still going to go over it and I think it's going to be fine so that way I don't have to worry about the screws turning when I go to tighten the nuts down for the speaker so let's go get this thing put in the cabinet and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. So here's the 60L. I was just getting ready to put it into the cabinet up there that I just finished with the grill cloth. But I was going to show you guys it, it actually worked in here. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, really? Really? This is going to happen. Didn't play, you know, didn't play at all. <laughs> but, you know, I was there. It's got good volume. And, and it was, you know, that was... Uh, and it turns was down well. Gosh. So, anyhow, let me go put it in. Okay, I got it all in there. And, uh, looking pretty good. I got my, uh, ground and antenna wire in there as well. Down to my cord. I'm getting ready to carry it into the living room and put it where it belongs. Well, there she and is in her rightful place. Wife's already got it all decorated up with stuff. Yeah, but uh, all in all, it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I think that the grill cloth turned out nice. And I think we're good. Got a little bit of hum, but uh, the hum wasn't there in the basement, so I think it's my lights that I've got going on up here. Life, so. we will search for something else. Same All right, with that's it for the 1933 Foco 60L. Thanks for watching Greg's Vintage Workshop.